Hey, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and we got to take a look at all of the available options that we can add to this team to improve this team. We obviously have some serious needs at corner right now. We may want to take a look at some linebackers that's available out there and may want to also look at other positions, offensive line, maybe another, maybe a true veteran edge rusher to start in place of Chase Young, maybe. And with as much as we would like to run three safety sets, I mean, we run a nickel but I think a safety is going to be on the field most of the time. And the way Percy Butler looked in the preseason, making some mistakes, even though he flashed a lot, he also made some fair share. Of, he also made his fair share of mistakes. And then Derek Forrest is our leading candidate for Buffalo Nickel. But who knows? So we may also want to take a look at safety. So we're going to take a look at all of the top veterans available whether they got cut and released through the waiver wire now the teams have been slimming down to the 53 man rosters or just guys that have been available this entire time we're going to take a look at every option that we have at every position group that i feel like we need an upgrade at but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one when i get back make sure i pull up every friday for the broadcast podcast live stream and also make Make sure you pull up every sunday during the regular season where i live stream during the game and then an hour afterwards i do another live stream a post game live stream where i open up the phone lines and y'all call in and you voice your opinions on what happened in the game without further ado let's get it All right. So first of all, like I explained briefly in the intro, we're going to have three safeties out there more than we're going to have three corners. And I feel like that's fairly well represented by the fact that we only have four corners right now, even though we're definitely not going into the regular season week one against the Jaguars with only four corners. That's not going to happen. I think we're honestly going to walk in with six, so we're going to find two more. But even then, when we have a fifth defender out there, it's going to be a defensive lineman some of the times. And it's going to also be a corner some of the times, mostly Benjamin St. Juice. But I think it's going to be a safety the majority of the time, which takes me to safety Jaquiski Tart, who was just cut by the Eagles a few days ago, even before the 53-man roster cuts. He spent most of his time in San Francisco holding it down, playing well. And then he signed a one-year deal with the Eagles this offseason. And I'm not exactly sure what happened. I'm going to have to go look at the tape, see what he did in preseason. But apparently it didn't work out. And they, I guess they released him knowing that they would had the inside track on trading for Chauncey gardner johnson who's definitely an upgrade but jaquiski tart man you never know and like i already explained percy butler flashes at times but he also makes his fair share of mistakes i mean he was the culprit safety on that danny johnson getting burned in that ravens game for the most open touchdown i saw all preseason against us and then Derek forrest leading candidate to be a buffalo nickel but at the same time do we really trust those two to be on the field as much as they're going to be required to be on the field so far so we'll see how that goes but so if we don't get a jaquiski tart I'm, I'm still optimistic about those guys, but if you want to bring in a veteran that you know can handle it, that's a guy because he's very versatile. According to Pro Football Focus, of course, the majority of his snaps came from two high sets or even just single high as the over the top safety by himself. But he also spent 160 career snaps in the box. So that man can literally be anywhere. That's very similar to the role that Cameron Curl does right now. And if you were to bring in a Jaquiski Tart, he would probably take over strong safety more so and then Cameron and curl would be your but would be your buffalo nickel and i think that's a pretty interesting situation right there definitely worth looking into will it happen doubt it but that's definitely an interesting situation to check into also sticking with safety landon collins technically safety linebacker if you want to keep camera curl at his current role of strong safety rather than moving him to buffalo nickel what other buff what other buffalo nickel to get in free agency than the guy that showed he can do that very well last year he was a big piece to that four game win streak we had last season so if we want to bring landon collins back i'm sure he would want to come back and again that's a certified starting buffalo nickel right that it can do everything you need him to do and again that would keep cameron curl at his current role of strong safety while landon collins would be at the buffalo nickel of course and also i feel like landon collins would be very cheap i'm not exactly sure what's going on with the situation between the commanders and landon collins it doesn't look like other teams are calling up landon collins so man if he comes and tells the commanders like hey man i'll play for like very little money 
just so I can prove that I deserve a bigger contract and maybe go somewhere next year in 2023. I don't see why we should turn them down. I don't know if there's some like internal stuff, some personality conflictions, something outside of football, coachability, stuff like that. But football wise, Landon Collins, bringing them back for extremely cheap makes all of the sense in the world. Like I've already explained, Percy Butler and Derek Forrest, I'm excited about those guys, especially in the future. But if you want to bring a guy in right now that you truly know that can hold it down at the Buffalo Nickel and do everything that you ask him to do, that's Landon Collins. Now, granted, Percy Butler Butler and Derek Forrest are more athletic than Landon Collins so they have a higher ceiling ultimately but Landon Collins easily comes with a with an obviously higher floor right now especially this season also before we get the more players just to let you know we currently have 13.4 million dollars in cap space this season so it's definitely not a money issue when it comes to anybody but again I'm pretty sure Landon Collins at this point with no teams calling for him and him coming to this team would give him the opportunity the perfect opportunity to show that he deserves a bigger contract for next year and potentially go to another team because this defense knows how to utilize him and bring the best out of him and hide his weaknesses so if he's willing to take cheap money even if he's not we can afford him again we have over 13.4 million dollars currently in 2022 now 2023 is where it starts to get a little ugly but this year we have the money even with Carson Wentz taking up 28 mil even after parent terry even giving jonathan allen big money last year we can still afford to hand out 13 million dollars if we wanted to now some other notable names at wide receiver josh gordon very talented hasn't necessarily recovered since being indefinitely suspended for weed and things like that he was most recently on the chiefs got cut fairly early up uh, just got cut and it's really sad to see because he was literally a top seven top five receiver when he was in his prom carrying the browns with terrible quarterbacks like brady quinn and stuff like that out there getting thousand yard receive out there having thousand yard seasons with mystery quarterbacks with forgettable quarterbacks but couldn't stay off the weed when the nfl banned it when the nfl was not allowing it now they don't care anywhere near as much but back then they cared couldn't stay off of it but who knows man you bring them in the talent is still there from what i believe i'm about to go look at his preseason tape to see what happened but apparently the chiefs felt like they can move on from him and go with some of the younger options if you want an option right there in josh gordon there you go but i think we're set with the six we have i'm actually really excited about the six so i highly highly doubt that happens so far out of the three names we've mentioned josh gordon is by far the least likely then tight end oj howard y'all know me man if anything i love this tight end group probably the most out of any other washington commander fan i absolutely love it top to bottom i'm so excited about armani rogers and curtis hodges especially armani rogers y'all already know i I've been on his case and saying that he could potentially be the next Darren Waller for months now. Even before we picked him up in the draft, I mocked him to us. And then the fact that we got him as an draft the free agent, that was probably one of my favorite moments of the whole draft weekend. The fact that we got him without having to use a draft pick, I felt like is a ridiculous deal. And we're going to show teams how much of a steal he is. So that just further proves my point that this tight end group, especially when healthy, is really good and can be one of the best groups in the NFL. Granted, we may not have the best singular tight end, but if we talk about a tight end group this could be a top five unit especially if guys reach their potential and most importantly stay healthy but on top of all of that oj howard coming out of the draft was arguably the best tight end prospect since gronkowski in a few years honestly i mean he literally looked like he could potentially be the next rob gronkowski that's how high his expectations were but it hasn't worked out with the buccaneers with the bills uh, another guy i'm about to go look at the tape and see what happened is it worth bringing him in but man definitely keep oj howard on your radar because the talent is there granted he's been hurt a couple of times but i refuse to believe that rob gronkowski level talent has just dissipated for no reason and then of course running back philip Lindsay. if you're not comfortable with jonathan williams and jared patterson you have that as an option but i'm very confident in those guys i feel like jared patterson could have made the roster i feel like he had I feel like he was a good option to make the roster, and I'm pretty sure the commanders are praying that he passes waivers and gets back on our practice squad. And then, of course, Duke Johnson is available as well at running back, but we're not going to target that guy. Also, Lynn Bowden. If you want some defensive tackle depth, you have Danny Shelton, a nice veteran, if you want to go with him over like a Daniel Wise, but I like what I've seen from Daniel Wise, so I'm excited about him. Also, also some guard depth, Solomon Kinley. And speaking of guard, Eric Flowers is still out there. Right now, with the way that we set up our 53 
53-man roster, it looks like we're confident that our starting offensive line should be healthy. And that's even including Wes Schweitzer as the direct backup along with Cornelius Lucas. So it looks like we're not looking for more offensive linemen. But Eric Flowers was holding it down and was one of the best left guards in the NFL last year. And he's not on the team right now. I'm unsure why. Because I know there's other teams out there that need a guard and can easily use an Eric Flowers. He'd be, he would be an easy upgrade. He would be an easy upgrade over what they currently have. But hey, man, if we have any injury issues, definitely give him a call. But as of right now, we do not need an Eric Flowers, even as much as I love Eric Flowers. Also, the Chargers cut linebacker Cole Christensen. That's a fairly decent option if you want, if you want to bring him in, try him out. Also, the Lions cut linebacker Anthony Pittman. May want to look at him. The Giants released edge rusher Quincy Roche, but he's more of like an outside linebacker edge rusher. So he's kind of what we have in Shaka Tony. I believe Shaka Tony's ceiling is higher, but Quincy Roche, just from his veteran experience and being in the league longer, you could definitely argue has a higher floor. But I'd still prefer to stay with Shaka Tony and figure it out from there. I think Shaka Tony has immense potential. I'm going to keep saying it, man. I think we need to play him as Sam Linebacker. I think he can cover better than what people think. And with him playing as Sam Linebacker, he'll be on the field more, which means you can blitz him a lot more. And I think he can play a very similar role to what Micah Parsons is doing, which is very coincident, which is very very cool too because they're both from Penn State and Michael Parsons when we took Shaka Tony in the seventh round said that said out of his own mouth that Shaka Tony was criminally underdrafted and felt like there's just no way with all of the talent that he has he should have went in the seventh round so I'm pretty sure he's looking at us like why are y'all not giving him more playing time and I'm screaming the same thing also another running back that was released Tevin Coleman probably most known for his days with the Falcons but he was most recently on the Jets and the Jets taking a top running back in the draft class pretty much sealed Tevin Coleman's fate so I wasn't surprised that he was released also the Lions released ex first round linebacker Gerard Davis I mean he had so much potential when he came to the league and it just hasn't worked out he's shown flashes but overall he just hasn't looked good if we want to try out Gerard Davis that's a very interesting name right there again all of the talent in the world coming out of the draft but it just hasn't worked out now even though he's from the state of Georgia he's a traitor he went to Florida which is our direct rival the team I hate the most in college football so that's making me hesitate on bringing him in just just a little bit <laughs> but no for real though i'm definitely worried about gerard davis first of all staying healthy and then just i mean the flashes they have been there but they've been so rare he's been bad more than he's been good so i don't know about gerard davis but that's definitely a hot name that's available also speaking of georgia my georgia bulldogs sony michelle running back just ended up getting released remember he was drafted by the patriots had some time with the rams got himself a ring didn't do much for it but got himself a ring along with another georgia bulldog and matthew stafford of course and leonard floyd but mark and michelle is Sony Michelle's brother? Wouldn't it be nice to have both of them on the practice squad? But I, that's de but that's definitely not going to happen because again, we're just praying that Jared Patterson makes it to the practice squad. If he clears waivers, he's definitely going to be our running back that's on the practice squad. Now, maybe if we keep another, maybe that guy will be Sony sony michelle but i just don't see it but me as a georgia bulldog fan i would love it and i'm definitely hoping mark and michelle makes it to the practice squad i'm really hoping for that also the eagles cut former starting safety anthony harris remember just like five years ago he was considered one of the top three safeties in the nfl at the very least top five especially when it comes to free safety specifically and since then he just hasn't been the same exactly another guy i'm gonna have to go look at his tape and see what he did this past preseason i didn't love what i saw from him saw from him from the eagles last year Year, but you can't deny that the talent is there he's not that old he's not that many years removed from being one of the best safeties in the nfl so i'd be willing to at least give him a look but like i already explained the way our safety group is organized i highly doubt we go after a guy like this we're pretty straight even without him. and then before we dive into the available free agents shouts out to the eagles man they're doing everything the way that i would young quarterback still on his rookie contract and then being as aggressive as you can in free agency and with trades and all of that type of stuff to put the best team around them because your best super bowl window is when your elite quarterback or at least good to really good quarterback is on a rookie deal saw that with the chiefs the chiefs haven't won a 
Super Bowl since they paid Pat Mahomes. It's going to be quite difficult to do that with the Bills after they paid Josh Allen, but somehow they figured out to put a really they figured out how to put a really good team around him. But there's a reason Tom Brady was taking all of those pay cuts when he was winning championships with the Eagles. Shouts out to the Eagles, man. I hate them mostly because they took two Georgia Bulldogs near and dear to my heart and it's going to really suck to have to root against them twice a year. But I have nothing but respect for the way that they're doing things over there. Because that trade for Chauncey, man, that came out of nowhere. And that's just the type of aggression I wish we had. That's the type of GM I would be. But hey, man, I'm not in charge of the commanders, at least yet. So we'll see. But moving on to some available free agents, you also have maybe D Ford, an outside linebacker. But again, that's more so like Shaka Tony's role. So I doubt it. If you want some tackle depth nate solder maybe cornerback wise you have joe hayden available logan ryan chris harris there's some options out there none of them necessarily great also trey waynes none of them great options but i think we're gonna bring in at least some at least one veteran corner i feel like we're gonna bring in two but i know at least one should probably be a veteran so that they're ready to play because we're just one injury away from christian Holmes starting and that's not good and even without an injury our corners don't play every single snap like Cole Holcomb does at middle linebacker. So Christian Holmes is probably going to be out there even week one unless we address this cornerback position. But again, I'd be very surprised if we go into this regular season against the Jaguars without two more corners. I think we're going with six. You maybe bring in a veteran, then you bring in a younger guy with some potential like a Kevin King or Vernon Hargreaves. Tory McTire still available. And he looked really good for us until he tore his ACL in that hail mary last play of the game against the falcons that literally had no value there was just a such a small success rate on that and it sucked that he tore his acl and hasn't been on the team since because of that play because it's such a bad way to go out and again there's all of these veteran options i mean jimmy smith xavier rhodes aj bouye there's quite a bit of guys out there now granted a lot of these guys last time we saw them they didn't look good at all but who knows man maybe they can revive their careers here especially since we should have a really good pass rush and a really good pass rush makes any corner better and what we require from a veteran corner is to just not make stupid mistakes you won't have to be as fast as you used to be you don't have to be as athletic as you used to be but just don't make the mistakes that kill us and getting burnt deep like the way danny johnson got burnt deep in that preseason game against the Ravens which is more than likely why he ended up getting cut and then linebacker wise free agent wise because corner and linebacker are our biggest needs right now as of how the roster is currently constructed this initial 53 man roster again I'm gonna keep saying initial because it's not the final they're definitely gonna make some moves this is not gonna be the exact team we have going against the Jaguars but again going back to linebacker we already addressed safety free agency wise Anthony Hitchens is available you have Donta Hightower Danny Trevathan you have Gerard Davis, like we already spoke about. My boy, AJ Johnson, even though he's not technically like a Mike linebacker, he's a really good outside linebacker that played very well up until the point that he got hurt last year. I mean, Pro Football Focus felt like he was one of like the seven best linebackers in the NFL last year, again, while he was healthy. You also have Alec Ogletree, Reggie Raglan. It's a lot of random names. And Donta Hightower is very interesting because like if he's healthy, I think he could still end up being really good. The problem is, when is he ever healthy? healthy but the last fully healthy season he had you could argue he was the best linebacker available currently right now if you can get like four years ago Donta Hightower before the whole COVID-19 situation happened and he sat out that year before then you could argue he was the best available linebacker of course John Bostic is there too but I skipped right over his name we're not even going to acknowledge that I will riot if we pick up John Bostic there's no way but yeah man Donta Hightower will be a nice veteran option he can stop the run he can cover all of that whatever you need him to do i think he still can do that but again when is he healthy but i'd be willing to take a chance on him doubt it happens i doubt probably anybody that i mentioned happens landon collins is probably the most likely or maybe even eric flowers because they have rapport with this team but even those guys i don't think are very likely if the offensive line stays healthy eric flowers is not getting the call and again i think it's some stuff off the field that leads to the reason why landon collins is not already on this team because if they wanted him he would already be here but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like if you liked it if you learned anything do you agree or 
could disagree with any of the options i gave out there also add some options in the comment section that you may know of that i forgot to mention or i didn't notice definitely get in the comment section let me know which free agents you feel like we need to sign to make the to upgrade this roster before this week one matchup against the jaguars because that's almost a must win game if you can't beat the jaguars and the lions and the bears who can you be they're not sweet at all they're looking at us the same way we're looking at them but again if you can't beat the jaguars how do you expect to beat the packers the eagles twice the cowboys twice the browns when deshaun watson gets back all of that but yeah man i appreciate all of the support man shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors name you see scrolling on the screen right now i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out